In this WrestleTalk news, WWE may have accidentally spoiled the result of the main event at SummerSlam. Bray Wyatt has teased another WWE return, some big names returning in time for AEW's All Out, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! It is currently San Diego Comic-Con, where all the biggest nerd culture stuff happens. The latest on movies, trailers, and WWE is also there sometimes too. But seriously, have you guys seen the trailer for the Dungeons and Dragons movie? Hugh Grant is in it. Anyway, an array of wrestling action figures were revealed at the convention from both WWE and AEW. Interestingly though, Mattel may have just unintentionally spoiled the SummerSlam main event of Roman Reigns vs Brock Lesnar for the WWE Undisputed Universal Heavyweight World WCW WWF WWF World Heavyweight Undisputed World Cruiserweight Tag Team 24-7 WWE title. Ringside Collectibles shared a picture of an Ultimate Edition figure of Brock Lesnar, and he comes with two very notable accessories, the WWE Championship and the WWE Universal Championship. Now, of course, Brock has held both of these titles in his career, so it could just be coincidence, but it does seem like curious timing. Action figures have been the bane of many movie surprises, like prior to Avengers Endgame, when they needed the action figures made of everyone in their time high suits, so it's not out of the question to think this could be spoiler territory. This would, of course, be incredibly shocking if it did come to pass, though, as I don't think anyone expects Lesnar to walk out of SummerSlam with the belts, what with Roman having already beaten him at WrestleMania this year, and the plans for Drew versus Roman at Clash at the Castle, indicating that Roman should probably be holding on to the belts until then. It would almost be as shocking as the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Hugh Grant is playing a rogue in it. One person we might be seeing come SummerSlam though is a returning Bray Wyatt, who has put out a WWE return tease. Can you believe it's almost been a year since Bray Wyatt was released from WWE? It was July 31st, 2021, and since then Wyatt has been a free agent. And while he's been away for movie projects and the like, fans have been eager to see him back in the ring. There's been the odd cryptic tease here and there, and that trend is seemingly set to continue. As yesterday, Wyatt updated his Twitter bio to read, Begin again, kid. It's what you do, VKM. Whether this is a tease of a WWE return, a mockery of Vince as he takes his advice and uses it elsewhere, or something else, I don't know, because it's Bray Wyatt and we never know. This is in conjunction with his tweet on May 31st that just read, Patience, it's almost time. What does almost mean, Bray? Do you mean it's almost time for the Dungeons and Dragons movie coming in 2023 where Hugh Grant plays a rogue? I know, I'm excited too. Right, sorry, sorry wrestling news. Something else that's exciting is AEW's All Out coming at the start of September, and there's new reports suggesting that some of AEW's top stars might just make it back in time for the show. No, no, it's it, it's not Sully. Sully isn't debuting in AEW for All Out, but he is coming. AEW is sorely missing some of its top guys right now, in the form of AEW World Champ CM Punk, former AEW World Champ Kenny Omega, and future AEW World Champ Brian Danielson. At least, I hope he is. However, it's possible that all three of them could be back in the ring in time for All Out this year, which would be a massive boon for the company. According to Dave Meltzer on the Wrestling Observer forums, Kenny Omega is hoping to be healed up in time for September 4th, having been out for multiple surgeries and rehab since November last year, but it's currently too soon to say whether he will or he won't. Meltzer also noted that All Out is likely the target for the returns of both Punk and Danielson too, with Punk having been out for surgery for a broken foot, while Danielson had suffered an injury, supposedly a concussion, in May. Another name that has suffered the injury curse right now is Adam Cole, who reportedly was on the receiving end of a serious concussion at Forbidden Door, while also dealing with other niggling injuries heading into the show, such as a torn labrum that he'd been battling with for several months. But in an encouraging update, Adam Cole was interviewed by Wrestle Buddies, where he mentioned that he was doing well, and on the track to recovery. I was pretty banged up. Again, for 14 years being in the pro wrestling industry, I think the most time I ever had off as far as traveling and being on the road was one month. I've been going, going, going non-stop. Eventually, our bodies kind of catch up to us, and I had a couple of things that were kind of lingering. I mean, what happened at Forbidden Door? Concussion. But I feel good. I feel very confident I'll be back in the ring soon. Cole mentioned again later in the interview that he would be good to go in no time. So maybe that's another name we can pencil in for all out. It'll be 
just like All Out last year, except with Punk and Omega on top of the Danielson and Cole returns. Which is quite the little group together of Punk, Omega, Danielson and Cole, and presumably Moxley after he defends the interim world title. It's still not quite as impressive as the party composition in the Dungeons and Dragons movie though, where Hugh Grant plays a rogue, sorry, sorry, back on track. There might be someone else joining AEW though, this time behind the commentary desk. AEW sure has no shortage of commentators with Excalibur, Taz, Tony Schiavone, Jim Ross, and occasionally Chris Jericho, Ricky Starks, William Regal, Caprice Common, and more. So let's add another. Mauro Ronaldo left WWE in 2020 and has been AEW adjacent as he provided commentary for the title versus title match between Kenny Omega and Rich Swan, but hasn't been used since by AEW. Dave Meltzer was recently asked on Twitter if AEW had considered bringing him back in, to which he replied that there was a conversation with Ronaldo's management some time back, which you would assume means that he won't be coming to AEW if the discussions had already happened, but as the channels of communication are open, perhaps there's scope for him to join before long. However, there has been one recent signing to AEW that has drawn some criticism. On June 12th, Troy Two Dimes Donovan was released from NXT for a policy issue, which in the days following was clarified to be a failed drugs test. However, Donovan showed up before long in AEW under the name Cole Carter, even appearing on Dynamite in a match against Ricky Starks. A report from Fightful Select has indicated that Carter is under an AEW deal, which is most likely a tiered deal, meaning he won't get the All Elite graphic, but is under a deal of some sort. However, this signing has drawn criticism from one day. Dave Meltzer, who spoke on Wrestling Observer Radio, saying, Here's the thing, literally no one knows this guy. There was a line about throwing him with the fishes, and if you watch NXT religiously, which most AEW viewers don't, you'd know what it was, and it's kind of cute and all that. I, for the life of me, cannot figure this one out. This guy wasn't over in NXT, no one knows who he is, he just failed a drug test. I think it's a bad policy to bring in a guy who just failed a drugs test. It's a fair criticism, and one that was echoed upon AEW signing of Jeff Hardy as well, with his controversial circumstances around his WWE release. In other news, Seth Rollins is back at it on social media, this time ranting against Cody Rhodes after he won an SB. Classic Seth. Quote tweeting a video of Rhodes on the red carpet, Rollins said, Truly, screw this guy, screw SPN, screw WWE, and screw you scumbags out there who continue to overlook me, discredit me, and undermine me. None of this exists without me. For those of you who have my back, I hear you singing my song every night. He wasn't content with just the one tweet though, continuing. I didn't have a last name to get my foot in the door. I don't pack it in and go home when things get tough. I don't take more than I give. I'm not a chosen one. I shoulder the effing load every single time. Make everyone around me better. Over deliver on the regular. And you know what else is going to over deliver? The Dungeons and Dragons movie coming in 2023 where Hugh Grant is playing a rogue. What's that? Oh. As I may have mentioned once or twice, Hugh Grant is playing a rogue in the Dungeons and Dragons movie, coming in 2023. Some people have noticed a bit of a similarity in his attire though, to one William Regal. Regal called out Mr. Grant in a tweet, saying, I'm a British icon, they all copy me. Dear Hugh has even stole my rogue design, bless him. At least be original, Petal. A fan replied to this tweet with a clip of Regal and Kurt Hennig from WCW, where Regal was also not nice about Hugh Grant, to which Regal responded with, filmed in 95. That's what I thought of Hugh Grant then, and I'm being polite. Even if he has stole my look and no doubt what else for his new film, bless him. Then again, fair play to him for a quick run round the wall of death for a tenor. Shame he got caught. Though I do, I do now, I do, I, I want to see William Regal play a rogue in the Dungeons and Dragons movie coming in 2023. And another thing you should want to see is my latest opinion piece slash video essay about WWE reverting back to a TV 14 rating and if it will actually help them. Check it out now. There's been an awful lot of talk in the wrestling world lately about WWE Raw potentially moving back to a TV 14 rating, moving away from the PG rating WWE have maintained on their product since 2008, apart from that one episode of SmackDown in 2020 that was TV 14 for some reason. I guess that Sheamus vs. Shorty G match was TV 14 worthy.